Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Straight Talk Vermont Show. I'm Bruce Wilson, Executive Director of Straight Talk Vermont. And, um, and Service Render is actually our parent company. Um, very happy today to have an incredible guest. I'll talk to our guest in a minute. But first, I want to announce, do some announcements. Um, as you, well, most of you know, a lot of you know about, we have this incredible art gallery in the University Mall called Art So Wonderful Gallery and Performing Center. And it's open, free to the public, primarily um, Wednesdays to Saturdays from 11 to 5.30. This, those hours are going to change. We're going to make some winter hours. We're going to make it more accessible and timely for people. But um, we have some come in there, bring your kids, and bring everybody there, and come in and, and, and look at all the incredible art that we have there. Over 400 pieces from artists from around Vermont. Uh, so amazing. Every time I go in there and just sit there, um, and look at the art and uh, there's some in the maze, you know, a lot of um, different medias and uh, people who are um, so creative with art. And, um, and so on, um, what is it, um, October 20th, we're going to have a big black history showcase of artists. Um, we're going to be performing there from 6 to 8 p.m. Come on in there, enjoy some poetry, some music. Some, some, just all kind of different folks uh, performing. And, um, and that's going to be a start of our, um, our new performances and events that we're going to do at our So Wonderful Gallery and Performing Center. On November 8th, we're going to have um, Vermont Youth Symphony Orchestra, which I'm just telling the alley, I'm so excited about that. Oh, God, I'm just, I can't wait to see all those youth perform. It's going to be over, it's going to be all the youth performing, 80 youth performing at our space. Our space is 8,000 uh, 8, square feet, so it's, it's nice and it's, it can accommodate those individuals. But right now, I'd like to introduce our, our guest, Allie Richards from Let's Grow Kids. And Allie, she's ex executive director. Let's, let's talk about you for a minute. Okay. Um, thank you for being our guest on our <laughs> thank show. Thank you very much for having and, um, me. We love Let's Grow Kids. I mean, um, you. wow, you guys have, do, do, have done so much. I think it should be the uh, permanent um, youth. Yeah, permanent, permanent fund. fund. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, um, yeah. And um, so you changed that in what, like 2000 or so? Around 2015. Uh, oh, we so sort of, yeah, it was oh. that was when the moment we sort of said, okay, final, you know, phase here. What's the campaign? What's the mission? What's the time frame? High quality, affordable child care for all who need it by 2025. And here we are, 2023, wow. and we're getting it done, like wow. you said. I appreciate, you know, wow. your long sort of history and understanding of what we do and uh, excited to talk with you about it. Oh, no, yeah. So, um, wow, so let's talk about exactly what you do. So, well, let's talk about, first of all, you're the executive director. Sure. So you're, you're the numero, numero uno, you know, <laughs> okay. grand, grand poobah, <laughs> you know, number one, <laughs> a.k.a. number one, <laughs> So, which is awesome, and you no better person then you could do the job. Um, so how did you get involved um, with Let's Grow Kids? Well, uh, I mean, and it's a perk of the job that I get to be the spokesperson out here representing this movement, and that's what it is, and that's what's so exciting. It's why we are where we are today, and we'll get into all that. But I, um, you know, I, I grew up in Vermont, and I went out of state to, you know, go to college, sow my wild oats, you know, I found myself in D.C., um, where I was working on the first Obama campaign, and honestly, you know, I was so excited to make change right from the center. And what I found was that's not happening, actually. You know, there's no civic discourse. People who don't agree with each other don't talk to each other. They don't work together. They don't even go to the same restaurants. And so I actually became quite disillusioned and I needed to roll my sleeves up and be part of real work. And so my husband and I felt the same way. We were young in our 20s and, you know, having great time, <laughs> but it wasn't fulfilling in any way so we came back to Vermont as fast as we could and um, I started working for the governor and I was his special projects person I became deputy chief of staff but it was sort of this crash course in coming back to Vermont being out there traveling all over the state with him hearing from Vermonters and the special projects for now, me are you talking about Scott? this was Shumlin. Shumlin. yep this was a, yep yeah, it, about so, 15 yeah, years ago yeah. oh my, my friend, gosh my Ooh, yeah. yeah. So, and I awesome. didn't know him at all. I came home because I heard about a gubernatorial candidate who was talking about climate change. You no, know, he was the first public official that used the phrase climate change. That was wow. 2011. Wow, That's that. scary, right? Um, talking about early child education. 
talking about re, you know, diverting money from corrections to pay for upstream things, you know, intervention prevention. So that caught my attention. Here I am banging my head against the wall in DC. And we're like, nope, new theory of change. Go home, let's make a difference, and we'll role model good policy, and we'll show what it does. And so that's why I got involved in now. The special projects was interesting, going around Vermont, listening to Vermonters, all the problems we care about here. If you go upstream, there is one that impacts all of them, our kids at the most critical time in their development. So my special project became childcare, became high quality, early learning opportunities for all kids. And then that became my life because I got recruited to run Let's Grow Kids in 2015 from the governor's office because I was doing this work from the state side with these private partners, philanthropic partners, you know, sort of this great public-private cooperation. And they sort of said, you know, you really want to do this, let's do this. And I um, came to Let's Grow Kids in 2015, it's been eight years, and uh -huh. like you said, we're on a journey. Uh -huh. Well, like I was saying earlier about um, our good friend, um, Governor Shumlin, you know, he's an awesome, awesome person. You know, he's been on this show before, Straight Talk from our show, and uh, he's come to all our um, youth, you know, youth events, and, yeah. and uh, at the time we had um, youth centers in all, uh, every mall, chill out centers. Mm -hmm. And um, and I miss, the, I miss him a lot, you know, yeah. I really do, I gotta go to um, his, his little small town in, in Putney, in Putney and <laughs> find him, you know. You I, should visit, <laughs> I bet he'd like that. <laughs> It's so funny because you know it's not probably not many people who dad who looks like me, but um so I, I'm I'm glad that um he did a lot of work you know and I also um to, I I worked with him and TJ to create um um, um what well, we create the um a program for the state's attorney um mm -hmm. um what was the name of it um, um we'll get individuals um um in courts faster to um. To, then they would go through traditional courses, and we would they would do they'll work with through the state's attorney's office, and then they'll, they'll get their um, whatever they need like community service opportunities. Diversion. And, yeah, just like a diversion. Yeah, yeah. So um, really I was work. happy. I was telling yeah. TJ we need to do that for years, and um, the governor said, "Yep." And then one day, and he, they come meet me at King Street, and we, and we presented the program, and I was like so happy. Rapid intervention. Rapid that's intervention, what, yeah. and that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And that is again, yeah. you know, when you people have good ideas and they're really seeing the different dimensions of it and then they collaborate like that change can happen fast we've yeah. seen that you yeah know? yes because like a lot of people just need to go through traditional court system some of them need to be all of them need to be accountable yeah. um, for what their actions were but they all need this uh, opportunity to be able to um showcase their talents and then we need to help with their goals and aspirations and uh, get them on the right track based on what um hundred percent what they um their goals and aspirations are and as you will know i mean i know it may seem like a tangent, but it's not. It's so related to early child education, as you know, Bruce. I mean, what's the number one indicator there, right? Like third grade reading. Oh, wow. You know, you're on a path where all of a sudden the opportunity is closing, closing, closing early, early. What breaks my heart and motivates me to do this work, you know, more than anything, is you talk to an early educator and they say, my kids come in and I know right away who has the opportunity and who doesn't when they are toddlers. Like that's just not mm -hmm. a world I, I think we want to live in. And, right. and that's one of the things that's like, we actually have a chance here with zero to five. And that's why, you know, I was drawn to it. Yeah. That's why I'm devoting my myself to this, you know, and so now I'm a mom, here. right? So it's like, breathe it and live it and everything. But um, it's amazing what you can do. You go upstream and you give kids at this critical time of their development, mm -hmm healthy relationships, stimulating learning environments, outdoor time, you know, you yeah. name it. We know what it is. It's Art, not rocket music. science. Art, music, physical yeah. movement, yeah. you know, nutritious food. No doubt about it. You know, no. access to, you know, curiosity, letting them lead through their own curiosity, right, in, in this emergent curriculum. You actually, you don't just, you know, um, set them up for a future of success in all right. the ways we know, reading, writing, worth the tick. Right. It's so much deeper than that. It's literally, you're, you're stopping adverse child experiences when you do that. And you're actually, you know, putting you on a path for healthy, physical health. Yeah. So chronic diseases, we now have pretty clear research. You know, if you have adverse child experiences between the ages of zero and five, you're more likely to have diabetes. Mm -hmm. And cardiovascular disease, little and social it's social emotional learning, anger management, resiliency against addictive behaviors. Like we know that a kid between zero and five, it's this amazing moment right. in their development that they will build off of a lifetime. And so the question is, where are those kids? Oh God. They're not at home anymore. No. So they need some sort of 
out of home setting. And what we found doing this work, Bruce, three out of five kids in Vermont who needed childcare didn't have access. Who needed it? That's like not even the full population. That's like 8,700 kids in Vermont oh, wow. today. I know. And then those who feel lucky enough to have found that spot. They're paying like 40% of so, their household income. I know, so much. More than a mortgage. And so it's not accessible, it's not affordable. And then talk about the quality, which I really represent. It's the human in the room like anything. Mm -hmm. The human in the room, that early educator. Are they supported, compensated, prepared, given the professional development, you know, respected? No, you know, $14 an hour on average without benefits to do this work. You could uh, literally make more money doing anything else. Anything else. And this most, what I just mentioned earlier about how critical this moment is, you want to talk about corrections. It starts zero to five. It all starts zero to five. So these are the humans doing that, and they're making less money than any other any other job. Right, I know. And so Teachers. that's Let's Grow Kids for you right, right there in a nutshell. What are we trying to do? Right. Fix all of those things. Right. And there is one solution to that is what we sort of were able to do here and you know again happy to talk about any of these pieces with you um, it's public policy change and public investment because the truth is in child care we know it's an opportunity these kids they need this it's, it benefits all of us to do this right and the parents cannot afford to pay more mm. and the early educators can't afford to pay less so something's got to give you uh, need public policy change and let's, that let's public talk about investment. more about the public policy change yeah. because yeah. how what, what do you do what's your steps how you, how you that's a big deal public policy eat change. the elephant one <laughs> bite at a time <laughs> I mean, so yeah, what I do mean, we do so so do you, it's part of you got to go through the legislators right 100 percent. okay 100 percent. there's po so. politics there's policy if you don't do that and you know you see around the country people know early childhood they know the science they know the opportunity. They know the return on investment. Why haven't we been able to fix this? It's our kids. You know what I often say? Like, it's our kids. That should be enough. It should be. But you know what? It's fine. If that's not enough, fine. Because it also impacts our workforce deeply, our economy. It's one of the best possible returns on investment that you could have. I mean, Ben Bernanke, the chairman of the Fed, right. was talking about, I'm going to shock you all. The best return on investment is child care, investing in child care. No you know, right? It. So, so it doesn't matter what your motivation is. This is the right thing to do. Why haven't we been able to do it then? Because it requires money an upfront investment, even though it's gonna pay for itself. That's hard. Yeah, it's gonna pay for itself. Like, I, you can't even, you can't even Hand put the measurements. Fist. You can't even, you can't even measure it. You know what I mean? Exactly. How much it'll pay for itself. You exactly. know, because these individual youth, when they get to be who they are, um, exactly. you don't know what their returns might be, uh, who they are, you know. You got it. You, all I know is it's gonna to be too great to measure. Bingo. Um, and yet we have actually taken a stab at, at quantifying it, at least, generally and like you said just to give a sense of what you just said because it's so much of it is is not even concrete hard to even say but it's um that's why for me it's it's our kids it's our yeah. future of course it's yeah. it's logical but three to one return over a lifetime of a child because of mitigating these costs and services they'll need for the rest of their lives but a three to one immediate return because you're putting money into the economy by paying higher wages, you know, by actually increasing the number of people who can work in Vermont because they can find childcare, right. by putting more money in their pockets because it's affordable. So it's an immediate three to one. And that does not even touch what you said about how do you even measure right. a healthy, joyful existence. You can't even measure, citizen. you really can't. And so, um, and so I agree with you. One, I mean, if it can go over 100%, I will. But um, <laughs> um, like we have um, youth advisory boards around um, primarily around the state yeah. and uh, with youth on making decisions on our programs, projects, and events. And um, we helped them with uh, education around drugs and that called yeah. tobacco. Yeah. And, um, and today, um, from our high school um, youth advisory board, then we have United College Club, which we still have, started in 1999. Um, and, and when they graduate, it's, we, our measurements, we still have youth, um, graduates, parents, doctors, and all kind of incredible people still working with our program. We have incredible measurements for just helping exactly what you're saying, Allie, helping youth with their goals and dreams and aspirations and at the start, I mean, while, yes. while they um, don't, don't know what they're going to be doing, um, don't have a healthy outlet to, to go to, exactly. um, don't, um, don't have the um, education, you know, their parents don't have really no place to really can afford to um, have them, send them to, you know, like have a place to 
B yeah. to get this stuff. Exactly. And so I understand that 100%, you yeah. know, and we have over 50 awards for doing this work. And so, um, Congratulations and thank uh, you. I know, but it's thank you. You know what I mean? Let's grow kids. It's, well, we it's can incredible. support. This is the wow. beauty support each other's work, you know, yeah. like these collaborations. It's this accelerant, you know, of like when you go up that stream, right? And like, why are the kids falling in the river in the first place, right? That's your opportunity to say, okay, now we're going to set this foundation, you know, sort of like there's a hole in the tapestry. There was no infrastructure for zero to five, and that's what we're fixing. And then once you fix that, the sky's the limit. I mean, like, talk about what really works. Everything you're talking about, like, once you have an infrastructure of childcare where there's enough of it, it's affordable, it's accessible, then think about it. Like, and, and all the things that the field is already working on, because they've been doing this with very little money and adverse yeah. sort of financial, Gosh. right? And little respect, too, um, as a society. And yet, they are the first line there with our kids, our families. They're huge lifelines to not just that kid. As, as a mom with kids in a high quality program in Montpelier, my goodness, it's as much for my husband and I and our ability to be good parents and to be members of the community. But then you start adding in that professional development. This is a critical time of, of learning. You have anti-bias training that early educators can sure. do. You know, as you well know, right. kids start thinking about ideas of race when they're six months old. So how are we preparing right. kids and their care, you know, their educators to talk about this, to explore this, develop this in a way early on? I mean, you just think about the ripple effects from there and it's so, amazing. Um, so Alan, you've been with Let's Grow Grids for eight years now. And so why? You might have some ideas why, uh, like all like like um, city council, um, legislators, um, even like um, organizations, you know, um, are not really the first thing that come out their mouth is childcare and education and educators. Why aren't no one really talking about? It? You don't hear that nowhere. It's got to be people like you and I who um, do the work who actually are talking about it. But why? 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 Why I is think it? It's that a good be the number one on our. On our uh, agenda, right? You. I think it, it's a great question, Bruce, and I think the answer is it's overwhelming. It's hard to do deep systemic transformation. That's what we are talking about here. No, nothing short of transformation. And so that's why Let's Grow Kids. We understood what you just said. Huh, makes a lot of sense, pays for itself, the right thing to do, what's going on? And we had to scaffold a solution that met the problem, which included all, all that sort of stagnation you're talking about. And so that's why we really went at it. We said, we're going to just be a campaign, a movement, people, policy Thank programs. We're so going to do it all. Thank well, and you. I hope we have some lessons learned in both directions, good and bad, of social change work that we can share broadly to other sectors, to other states, you know, whatever it takes, because um, we got to accelerate this work. Right. And, and it, there's some real lessons learned that are beyond childcare. But the idea of how do you build a movement for deep generational change and transformation and you know that's what we were able to do people policy programs so people over 40,000 Vermonters are involved in this campaign the child care campaign they lifting up their stories I mean it, it feeds in both directions you know this policy and this work is from Vermonters by Vermonters so 40,000 folks that's, that's a lot five percent of our population it's an interesting group all walks of life you know and they are lift we're lifting their stories up they're you know, informing this policy from those who are closest to it. And on the flip side, they're mobilized to get lawmakers to talk about this, to get this to be a priority, right? So that's the people power necessary for this level of change. But we also did the programmatic work and they've worked beautifully together. We actually have early educators on our team who have been in communities helping to ready the system, understand it, you know, what's the weakness, what's the strength, how do we build off of the bright spots, helping to actually increase the childcare infrastructure capacity waiting for this big policy change. And that's the third piece, policy. So these three things all work together that's what we've been able to scaffold at Let's Grow Kids. And the policy piece is the key. Because you do not make this change, as we talked about earlier, without that public investment. It is just the solution to this problem. Like many things, right, by right. the way. And so we had to build that level of understanding and support to get that. And that's what I'm so excited to, to be here today to share. It's working. It's working. In 2023, I mean, we passed ah. the biggest child care bill in this country's thank history. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Act 76 is, is affectionately now known. I appreciate that. <laughs> it is I'm our you did that. deep pleasure. I mean, yeah. it's a movement of humans. Again, what a perk for me that I got to be here talking about it with you. I know. Because look what it did was, it took us, it, it is nothing short of historic. One aspect of that Definitely historic. sort of nature of, <laughs> of what we did is the bipartisan piece oh, of it, Bruce. Okay. I mean, we had overwhelming 
bipartisan support. Dems, progs, some Republicans, some independents, and the only libertarian all voted yes, and then they voted yes to override the governor's veto. So, you know, this bill wow. is historic from that dimension alone, but then it makes us the most expansive um, child care system in the country. And so now exactly what is, what is it going to do for us? So it's going to stabilize the child care sector, and then it's going to start making serious improvements in quality, access, and affordability. In the most basic sense, it infuses $125 million a year first of its kind, sustainable, dedicated revenue to zero to five. Isn't that awesome? What a, what a Never win. Never happened what a win. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> oh you so gosh. much. I really appreciate that. You are oh, welcome, and it's our pleasure. It's our mission no, in no, life. No, it's your mission goals and objectives to do this. This is the work you are doing and is supposed to be doing. And so you only supposed to have um, uh, out your outcome measurements. It's only supposed to be is like they are with this, um, with this bill. And so... Um, right. And it's it's exciting. Of, so when is, going, when is that going to start? Well, so it's already started. The first wave of funding has actually just gone out to child care. And what it does, it, the first wave is primarily to stabilize the child care sector and to start increasing quality and get them ready for expansion, which starts in January. So then that's, it's like the first wave is a sort of like infusion of capital to help with this beginning of this transformation. In January, um, the first real expansions, you see money, actually more money going into the pockets of the early childhood programs so that they can, you know, grow, increase salaries, compensation, support for their staff, grow their staff, you right? About it. You got to do that, huge. right? Huge. Can't, got to. Cannot grow without the early educators. Oh, and please. we all are hurting with the workforce right. crisis. Oh, no doubt about it. You know, it. so we have to, no and a big hurting. reason why it's so constrained in zero to five is there's no incentive. You do not get enough money to do the work. So that's a huge piece of the puzzle here with this money. You can actually increase salaries for early educators, right. you know, to a more livable wage here. And, um, and then you start seeing in April through October expansion of income eligibility. What does that mean? More Vermonters get tuition assistance to pay for their child care. It's more affordable for them. 7,000 wow. more Vermont families are going to be Isn't eligible. Isn't that awesome? Wow, you know, you know. Um, it is. <laughs> wow. So another thing too is that, um, um, like, you know, I said on Vermont State Police, uh, fair and partial police in the community. And so what they do, you know, they, they, they are unique for years for how they do things. And a lot of other police departments do too. And it's like they send um, candidates to Pittsburgh for the trainings, right, to be um, um, troopers. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think, um, uh, because in Vermont, you know, we've been trying to do this forever, like with uh, Governor Shumlin and a lot of and a lot of people in legislation, yes. and a lot of a lot of us want to keep our students yeah. who graduate from UVM and all these all these say Michaels and all these incredible uh, higher learning yes. uh, institutions, but they go they go they leave us. Exactly. And so I think what we should do is uh, invest try to figure out ways to get them into uh, the areas that um, that can help our youth and families 100%. and, uh, and uh, zero to five um, kids, you know, and it's just like invest in them while they're going to um, maybe pay some of their college loan or something, you know what I mean? And then let them, because you stay with us for five years, you know, do there this you uh, higher learning, you're a teacher. You, you're a teacher, kid. That's your, no. <laughs> you know, but you know, yes, you know, you know, let me say, that is so <laughs> critical. You know, you know, all yeah. these, all the opportunities yeah. we have, we need to take. What, another, like, you could say, what's the key motivation for doing this? It's hard for me to pick. It depends on the day and the story and, you know, the moment we're in. One of them is that sort of like do right by your kids and all that stuff down the road up to corrections for our opportunity. Mm -hmm. Equity is huge. But that's another one right there. Yeah. Our aging demographic will do yeah. us in here in every possible dimension in Vermont. And we know it. We're just being constricted. It's, uh, it's hurting affordability. It's hurting opportunity across the board. And so... Um, what do we do about that? God, zero to five is one of those few oh, places that you can increase the birth so rate, important. you can get young families so here, you can keep them. You know, I can remember a lot of things like when I'm from Chicago and um, my folks used to send me to, like I used to go to camp every year and I remember why I learned why I learned archery. I remember when I learned to swim. I remember how to ride, where I rode the horse. I remember a lot of things just for going to camp, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so that's what we're trying to do with these, these um, Yes. Not only um, be able to go to camp, you know what I mean, but also to learn from them. And uh, you know if you go to camp or if you go into some type of learning programs that yes. from the zero to five, that you're going to retain them. And it's going to be with you for life. And because those things I learned when I was that young, real young, small kid, yes. I still retain them. And I still, yes. and I use them to a mentor the following. And so I get it, you know what I mean, it just makes sense to me. And just, 
It is a, it. it's a no-brainer. Visceral, right, exactly. That's the thing, right? It's sort of like once you get into it, you're sort of like, you sort of become a little indignant. It's like, why aren't we doing this? And every year we wait is a year that we've lost, you know, these kids and haven't had the opportunity. These parents that aren't working, it's, it's you know, it's all those Absolutely, it's 100% yeah. of those and, things. You know, and, we're, we're, and then uh, as you grow older, as you grow older, kids grow older, you know, you're going to be better at one thing than the other, you know what I mean? But, you know, the best thing it is that you're going to be is what you want to be, you know what I mean? And that's... Oh, and that's what breaks my heart, because these students go into the field that, of their choosing. They get trained up on it, and then they get loans for it. And then they can't work in the field uh, that we need them in, yes. that they've chosen, Allie. that they're in debt Oh, over. that bothers me so much. And then they you know, can't be in Vermont. So they that's where it's like, again, why are the kids in the river? Let's go upstream and pull them out before they go right. in the first. This right. is one of those examples of like, wait a minute. we got to all get together, like you're saying, and understand these linkages. Because here's one. There's 500 students at CCV in the early ed track. Mm -hmm. 500. You know Vermont. <laughs> we have like 650,000 people. Like 500 is a pretty big number. It that really can make is. a pretty big statistical it difference. Really can. So we're talking about opening up these new centers. You know these no in-home um, childcare, growing the capacity. Can't do it without the humans. Those are 500 students wow, that will hopefully now stay in Vermont, who maybe wouldn't have stayed, stay in the field we need them in that they have trained for. If not for this bill no chance of getting them into a field that would pay them 14 an hour. Isn't that awesome? You know what I mean? So think about that virtuous cycle. I know, isn't that Create awesome? the virtuous cycle. Um, yeah, we have to give, give yeah. them incentives to stay, exactly. right, as well. And, um, exactly. Wow, man. Yeah. So um, I'm, so, I'm just so glad. You, you, you're thinking about it all, you know what I mean? Uh, you got it's a good, a got a good bridge you're crossing there. A and, lot uh, of people collaborating. You know, so you get good ideas when you bring a lot of voices together, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah. you do, you, tr you sort of plumb at all. What about this? What about this? Have we thought about these? Uh, what about the workforce? And actually, that's another thing I'd love to sort of say is... Well, let's talk about it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Vermont Association for the Education of Young Children. It's like the membership organization, the professional organization. You know, for so many years, what is this field? Early educator, child care worker, provider. There hasn't even been a name in this country. You know what I mean? It's been mostly women around the country, mostly women of color, doing this work without a, even a title, not even considered a profession. Mm -hmm. And we have to change that. And so we're leading the charge in Vermont. Advancing as a profession, they have decided early childhood education. That's the name. They are early childhood educators. Of course they are, by the way. Of course they are. Let's just <laughs> name it, you know. And so Vermont Certainly. Association of the Education of Young Children, they are the group. They are with the from the field, within the field, for the field, and we've been supporting them to take on that leadership role and really run it from the field itself. What does it look like to be a profession? Minimum compensation, minimum credential standards, that's all in the works. It's been 20 years in wow. the works. And that's the sort of thing where someone's like, okay, now we pass this bill, but who's thought about the workforce? Oh, I don't know, these thousands of people for the last 20 years, they've been thinking of everything, they've been working on consensus-based plans, you know what I mean? Like a bridge for the current workforce to the future workforce and all that, and so it's amazing, beautiful body of work. It's happening from within the field, and um, that will live on well past our work. We're sort of like a one-time catalyst here at Let's Her Kids to make this big change. And then there's other groups too, First Children's Finance as an example, they're like the, business technical assistance for the sector of childcare. You know, like Small Business Development Center, right? Like we've ignored childcare as a profession and a business. It's both. And so we're changing that and creating sort of this infrastructure so it can be efficient, effective, have these sort of considerations, get the voices in to really, you know, craft what it is and um, support it being sort of healthy and um, thriving into the future. So we have sort of helped set up some of these things over the years with a lot of partners that we're very proud of because honestly, that's the systems work that like is, you know, you don't talk that much about and it's necessary. Um, you know, if you're doing responsible transformational change and so, that's happening too. And so anyway, it's just a big piece of the puzzle. And um, we're really, we're just proud of that. We're proud yeah, of the humans be who proud. have been at the table. So, um, mm -hmm. so are you thinking about, um, let's grow kids, you know, um, it's, pretty, it's a statewide organization. Pretty, and um, are you thinking about like um, reaching other, actually you should be a model for all other countries. I mean other <laughs> countries too, but other states. Um, I appreciate that. No, I think so. Do you think so? Well, we have, I think, done things that are valuable. We have found some valuable lessons. Again, in both directions. I'm not just, saying we are better yeah. than nobody. I'm not saying that we've done some. <laughs> we just do things. We have done some diff things a little differently. Yes. And, and I think, and, I think and, some and, and creatively. And so I'm lessons. thinking that uh, maybe um, 
others might should hear about what we do. Well, I'll tell you, one, like we're a national kids. leader now. That's this what I mean. bill, we're a national leader. And two, we're always, always help, happy to help another state no to do about the federal it. stuff. And honestly, I will tell you, we've created a community, Bruce, of those of us working in early childhood across you know, different states that are moving forward. And we all agree, that's what's amazing. There's a best practice of what's good for the kids, what's based on research, how do you support the workforce. All of the bills we're all working on, they look the same and that's really validating. You know what I mean? Like, look, we've really come to some agreement in this country about what this looks like. Now we just have to have the will, the political and public will to get it done, move the money around, right? And um, so what I'm hoping to do is not just share, as we have been, we're on lots of panels and webinars, we're happy to share. It is, you know, no anything that will accelerate this no for kids it. across this country, you got it. Let's do it. You know, exactly. And and the beauty is there is a community and we're all learning and growing together. We have for many decades, honestly. Right. Um, and we're really validating each other's work and that's great. Um, and I truly believe there's another dimension here that we can help other states in this country by Again, small state, lots of good conditions here, you know, sort of getting it done. Um, when we start rolling this bill out, which is what we're doing now, you know, it has to go as well as it can. You know, we're committed to the really effective outcomes and implementation here. Um, I think we're going to show some valuable trends that other states can't ignore. Okay, they can say, oh, sure, you're Vermont, oh, sure, you're small, oh, sure, your demographics are this or that. But really, we're like, that may be true, but that doesn't mean that when the cause and effect is real. We invested in our kids and we grew our labor force particip participation, right? right? We're anticipating. We grew our female participation in that labor force. We attracted young people to the state. We increased our third grade reading scores. You know what I mean? You cannot argue with you can't some argue cause with and effect on that. And yeah. we could hand that to other states and say, here's an accelerant to building your political will with your lawmakers, to building your, getting your governor from whatever party uh, focused. Does that governor care about the economy? Great. Here's a roadmap for that person to thrive, you know, to have a thriving economy. And guess what? It's investment in zero to five. Who knows? So let me ask you a question, Ellie. We only have a few, few, few moments left. Um, how do you get the parents involved? How do? Because mm. we need to educate them too, you know. Sure. Uh, you got it. Of course. So, so how do you do that? In High the quality. It's, I love the question, by the way. There's so many important parts of this. this is why I love this issue. It's rich. It, it affects everything. Um, High quality early child education is a two generational thing, truly. The child is, is in the care, is getting that instruction, that support, that confidence, you know, and the parent is a trusted relationship with those early educators. They're one of the closest people in their village. Honestly, that's what it is, Bruce. We always have needed a village to grow our, our families. No, no. And it's looked different from the beginning of civilization, but there's always been something. Extended family units, like, you know, clans, tribes, whatever it is. It's just recent history where we don't have a village anymore. And so what we're seeing is high quality childcare, access to that for communities who really need it. That's a village. Yeah, and so no that's doubt. the parent support. You're part of a community. You have that trust relationship with that early educator. They're as much a guide to that parent as they are to the kid. And I've seen it firsthand, and that's how you're gonna make generational impact. No doubt. And honestly, you wouldn't believe what some of these early educators do. You know, some of them are the first to know that there's domestic violence happening in the house, right. and then they support access to services. Some of them know that they're missing, the family's missing a car payment, and you know what happens, you miss one car payment, all of a sudden, oh, you're on so the car, you can't go to work, yeah. boom. They pay for the car payment. I mean, you wouldn't believe what is happening. So this idea of high quality early child education is, is bigger than you might expect. It's not read and write and arithmetic, bath to that. It's, it's not that. It's that and a million other things for the family as well. You know, and um, honestly, that's thriving communities, thriving, no you know, engaged communities. And th this can be a hub. A hub uh, well, yeah, no doubt about it. You are a hub already, you know. And so I, I just want to say, um, um, well, first of all, you got any last things that you want to say? You know, you want to promote, um, promote any of your, uh, you know, how people can get involved? Maybe you want to look well, at your, sure. your camera right there, light on there? Straight to camera. Yeah. Um, so basically, we're going on the move this fall with the Courage in Action Child Care Tour. This is the best way to get engaged. I just want to say we've made huge progress, as we've talked about. It is historic. We're getting it done. And now we've got to make it work together. All of us. We've got to stay engaged. We have to celebrate, support, encourage this. To stay on the top of mind, like you said, why isn't this top of mind? 
It's starting to be, and it needs to continue to be. We need to have some resolve here to make sure the implementation goes well, and we really see this through to the fully solved childcare crisis in Vermont. And people can get involved. We're, we are not even close to done. We've broken it open with this huge bill, and we got to see it through. So that's, you know, we have a tour this fall. We'll be all around Vermont in communities celebrating, talking about the work, the work that, you know, that we've accomplished and the work ahead. So letsgrowkids.org is a great way to be in touch with us um, and to be involved in the movement generally and, and come out this fall with a Courage in Action Child Care Tour. No doubt about it. So that's so good. They can always check your website and find out everything it. that's going, going on and what's happening. Um, and so you could always, you know, I'm, my brain is always switching it and turning about, you know, when you're talking about youth and families, you know, and community, how can I help? And so we have this incredible uh, art gallery. I don't, I don't think you've been there yet. No, I haven't. And uh, it's in the University Mall. Yep. It's art so wonderful. Gallery and Performing Center. It's 8,000 square feet. Exactly. And so we would love to um, be able to host any events or anything you want to do there, like um, um, Let's Grow Kids uh, could come there and, uh, and fundraiser, you know, charge you absolutely zero dollars to uh, come in and do that. And we can help you with our sponsor if you want to do some food or whatever. I think you should all the time, just have some, have the community come and, and uh, we have a, um, a, a stage performing, say 20 by 20 stage in there, and people can uh, present and talk about Let's Grow Kids and how ways people can get involved. They can sign up right then. Um, they can, uh, we can have, I can bring in some, because we have entertainment, uh, it's our so wonderful gallery and performing center. <laughs> we have inter music entertainment. We can bring in some entertainment and um, some of our sponsors, like um, um, you know, some wineries and different things like that. And we, we can have in our Thank place. Thank you so much. And I have um, a great um, fundraiser for Let's Grow Kids because I want to help out as much as I can. We can do it all the time. So I'm going to remind you of this, Allie. Oh, please do. I, I would love you. to collaborate with you. Yeah, this no is where it. the magic happens. Yeah, no I doubt. so appreciate that, no and no let's do it. it. And let me know if I, any ways I can help. So thank you for coming on the Straight Talk with Macho Ali Richards from Let's Grow Kids, the executive director. Awesome. She's done a whole lot of work since for eight years now and um, continue to do a lot. Uh, wow. Some big, big news. Um, people should tune in on your um, yeah. website and yeah. learn about ways they can get involved. Thank Thanks, you Ali. so much, Bruce. Yeah. So appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. You too. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Everyone. you.